We give God glory in Jesus' name. Give God glory in Jesus' name. Everyone, blessings to you. Blessings to you. Am I clear? I think my signal is low. Am I clear? I think my signal is low. Everyone, blessings to you. Of course, saints, I'm going to be ministering on here. It's going to be really powerful. Really powerful. Now, saints, those of you all, listen, I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. Next week, I'm shipping out everyone's book, Increasing Your Anointing as a Virtuous Woman. Every single person that has this book that has no table of contents in it. If your book doesn't have table of contents in it, if your book don't have the table of contents in it, I am shipping out this book to you, okay? So just know that. Next week, before the weekend, you should have it. Next week, I'm shipping out your book. Those of you all that don't have table of contents in your book, you should be receiving your book before the weekend next week. Okay. Those of you all that have a book without the table of contents, you can, uh, you can, uh, write, ProfitJHM at gmail.com. I'm switching my internet. <laughs> I'm switching my internet because I'm trying to be great. It won't let me be great. Switching my internet. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. Oh, come, let us adore him. You are ho holy. Holy. Mm -hmm. Are you Lord God? Almighty, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. to switch my internet
praise God. Tonight, 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 I'm dealing with something very powerful here because oftentimes you're going to encounter, you're going to encounter, uh, you're going to encounter moments where the Lord wants you to exercise dominion with your mouth. He wants you to start speaking with authority. Uh, with authority. He wants you to speak with dominion and authority over your circumstance. And commanding things in the name of Jesus is your covenant right. You have a covenant right to command things in the name of Jesus. You have a covenant right 
to command things in the name of Jesus. Your mouth has power to manifest the word of God concerning wealth, riches, money, and every blessing that Jesus paid the price for you to have. Decreeing money is a blood bought right. You have a right to decree money. Money is your inheritance. Wealth is your inheritance. And you have to renew your mind about money. Money is spiritual. Money just been in the hands of the wrong spirits. Money is spiritual. Money, money not carnal at all. Money came from God. It was a God idea. Decreeing money is a blood bought right. Listen, Jesus released authoritative grace upon your life for you to speak money into existence. You got a right to speak the amount of money that you desire to have. Now, here's, here's, here's what happens. The Lord needs you to start speaking money to groom your decisions into uh, financial wisdom concerning money. He, he need he needs you to uh, he needs you to grasp the authority that you have so that you could decree money without having double mindedness, fear, or depression concerning your situation. Because saints, let me tell you something. Uh, Jesus was a money commander. And let me not say was, he is a money commander, but he looking for somebody in the earth that he can command money through as he used their mouth. He looking for somebody in the earth that will continue that zone of his ministry. The money ministry of Jesus. Jesus is Jehovah Jireh. He's a provider. And he provides supernaturally. Anxiety is the enemy to wealth. Anxiety is the enemy to wealth. Anxiety is the enemy to wealth. The anxious person will never be the wealthy person. Never. There is a divine wisdom that God will give me to raise my financial level so that I go from one financial glory to the next financial glory. Now, the Lord is not going to enforce this wisdom on me because not everybody is going to be rich. Not everybody is going to be wealthy, though it is available to everybody. Uh, isolation is where God trains me to be a financial carrier of his wisdom, of his money bags, of his uh, prosperity. Isolation is where God trains me. Why? Because making financial decisions in the spirit will get you persecuted by those that are in the flesh. Making financial decisions in the spirit will get you attacked by creditors. People in the natural that are uh, debt collectors, all those different zones. I've been there. I know all about that. You ever been so hungry that you made a sandwich out of something? You made it out of air. 
You ain't pit no meat. You just bit the air in there. Just hope that it was something. You just imagine what you was tasting. Huh? Huh? You ever been so broke you wish somebody would give you a dollar? 50 cent? Huh? Huh? You ever been so broke? One time I was so hungry I made a grocery list. Man, I had stuff on the grocery list I don't even eat. And give me some peanuts now. Eh? Peanuts now. Uh, give me some sushi now. Sushi now. Give me some. Give me some rotisserie now. Rotisserie now. I had a whole grocery list. Uh, you notice you don't get hungry for food until you go on a fast. What that all about? Make a decision to go on a fast. See how you start dreaming about chicken. You wake up, oh, I just saw chicken run across my room. Bark, 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 chicken. Hey, what the bark, what the chicken at? Why, why I want some chicken? I'm, I'm a vegan. I don't even eat chicken. Now, until you go on a fast, you start dreaming about food. Try, 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 try to not eat during breakfast. Watch how you imagine everything. Pancakes. Now, now watch this here. When you don't eat for a long time, notice you start having weird cravings. Huh? That's how the devil do a lot of times with you. When you don't have uh you don't have activity in a certain area of your life for a long time, it can be sexual activity. It can be a uh, uh, conversational activity. You notice your appetite for it will become kind of weird. If if you never have, if you if God restrains you from conversation, you'll want to conversate with somebody that's mumu, but you don't even see that they mumu, that they cuckoo for cocoa puffs, but you'll still want to talk with them. They can invite you. Come on, t come on, let's go on a date together. You going on a date with Matumbo? Matumbo got a butcher knife in the back pocket. He about to slice your neck and cook you for turkey. He wants some neck for his turkey, but he don't want the neck that's that's alive. <laughs> he don't he don't want the neck that's alive. <laughs> he wants the neck that's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but you went on a date with Matumbo. God ain't God ain't, God ain't put you together with Matumbo. You got together with Matumbo. <laughs> you got together on a date with Matumbo because you was up there hungry and thirsty for conversation because God this is what God restrained from you. <laughs> Matumbo want neck for his Thanksgiving, but he don't want the type of neck that that's alive and well. He want the neck that's he won't cut your neck. But you don't know it that you were a crazy man because you're thirsty for conversation because this is what God restrained from you. Always remember that Satan is going to tempt you with the same thing that God restrained from you. Oh, that's a wisdom door. That's a wisdom door. Yeah, let's jot that down. 1249 a.m. Central Standard Time. Satan will only tempt you with what God has restrained from you. If God tell you not to eat no donuts, you know, all going to come before you is donuts. You're going to see Krispy Kreme commercials. You're going to see Krispy Kreme. Little child going to have a Krispy Kreme wrapper and going to drop it on the floor. You're going to be walking past. You might trip over it. Look at the paper. You're going to see it's Krispy Kreme. You're going to drive past Krispy Kremes that you ain't never seen before. You're going to end up having dreams about Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme is going to be in your mind because whatever God has restrained from you, it gives Satan an idea to tempt you. You know God ain't sending everybody to no church building. Saints, you meet everybody. Watch what religious people do when you meet them. You know what religious people do when you meet them? Who's your covering? 
what church you connected to. That's all they can ask you. How about you ask me, do I know Jesus? You done abase the spirit of Jesus to a building? <laughs> you done belittled the creator of the universe that he wasn't even in the universe. He was outside of it. He made the universe for us to have a place to live. He was somewhere else. You going to abase him to a building? That's all they ask you when you meet them. Or uh, uh, what denomination are you? Uh, who's your pastor? Who's your covering? What church you go to? Saints, I remember when I was witnessing when I was younger. I remember I evangelized a whole city just preaching Jesus. I had no pulpit. I, it was during the time where I left. Uh, I left some of the preaching engagements that I had, the preaching connections I had with people. Because Jesus, when I went to him one day, because I was given the opportunity to step out and start my building, which I was attracting crowds. Now, this was way before, before I even started doing this. I was 14 years old at the time, I believe, 14 or 15. I was attracting crowds. There, there was a couple of people in my meeting where I would pray for them. They would, boom, hit the floor. And I began to realize, uh-oh, who the hell knocked her down? <laughs> Wait, this, this, this ain't. What the hell you? Get yourself up, girl. Get yourself up. You just got your hair done. What you want from me? They're going to say, I knocked you down. What you want from me? I looked at Mike Tyson. What you want from me? Get yourself up, girl. Get yourself up. I would be in a service just uh, preaching and then we'll go to the end and I'm just praying for people. And, and before, boom, and they fall on the floor. I looked at them like, what? What that supposed to mean? Y'all ain't going to pick her up? I mean, you just gonna, you going to put a sheet on her, man? She going she can't breathe. Don't put a sheet on her, man. Why, why she just fell down like that? So I was given, <laughs> I was given an invitation to start my own building and of course it's a major decision and I'm being young like that so I went into what I knew to do I said I said Jesus uh I said do you want me to start this building I said Jesus is this your will for me to walk into this door do you have a plan for me to start preaching like this now or what? I said, whatever you say, I'll do it. And Jesus told me, he said, son, don't do it. It's not my will for you to step out yet. He said, your process ain't finished yet. Don't step out. So I told the people, I said, I'm not doing this building thing. Thank you so much, but I'm not doing it. They got real mad at me. Why people always get mad at you when you obey God? But if they would have listened to God. They would have knew not to even put me in that predicament. But people are not listening to God. Even leaders. You see leaders sometimes. They're not led by the spirit. That's dangerous. You know how much a judgment is for you to lead people. And you're not led by the spirit. And even if you don't got confidence. If you're led by the spirit. You shouldn't be leading. You need that confidence. So I didn't do it. But there came a time where I started meeting people, random people. I would minister to them about Jesus. And some of them, while I was talking to them, I could be inside of a Walmart. Boom, they're falling down. The now, one time I remember I was in a Kroger and there was a lady. She was, uh, you know, in one of those cart thingies, you know, them cart thingies that you push. So while she was in the cart thingy pushing it, I was with my mother at the time. And we was with someone else at the time. I remember I felt such a boldness come on me. At the time I'm praying. Makarapa kurre, makarapa kurre be. So I see a lady in the aisle. She walked past me. But I felt an anger come on me. I got real angry. 
because I realized she was crippled. I got mad at the devil. I saw in the next hour, I said in my heart, if I see her again, I'm going to pray for her. Got to one hour, didn't see her. Went down a couple hours. She was at the downwards hour getting some chips and some, some, some chewies or something. Getting something, just something to, something to crunch on. I'll tell you that right now. Like, you don't want to mess up your dentures. I'm going to tell you that right now. You, you, you. And there, there ain't no time for that. You got to protect what God gave you. You got to protect what God gave you. I mean, I ain't, you got to protect what God gave you. If he gave it to you, you got to guard your, your teeth with all diligence. Out of it flows. They hit your two pains, all of that. Got to the, got to the area where she, she had chips. I said, hey, how you doing, ma'am? She said, hey, how you doing, young man? I wanted to tell her I'm old enough to be your daddy. No, nah, because that's my spirit, man. It's not, not my flesh. My flesh, you might look see a young man like that. I'm old enough to be your daddy. You don't know where I come from. I don't. I ain't no young man. <laughs> you think I'm a young man. Hey, how you doing, young man? I said, I'm doing fine. I said, uh, I saw you in the other aisle. You just walk past. Uh-huh. I said, I, I said, I see you in the wheelchair. She said, yeah, I'm in the wheelchair. I said, it's because you can't walk? Or you just driving because you old? I said, just like that, I wanted to know, is it because you old? Or you, are you driving this because you are actually in need of this? Do you need this or are you just doing this because you? She said, no, no, no. I'm driving in this because I, I don't got the ability in my ligaments, my legs. She said, I don't, I don't walk. She said, I'm driving in this because if I stand, I can't stand. I said, really? I looked around, see if I ain't seen no workers. I said, well, can I pray for you? She said, sure you can, young man. I got a son just your age. Why you always got to tell me that? I don't want, what that got to do with me, Paul? <laughs> Why well, I got to hear that you got a son my age? I don't need to hear that. You messing up the flow. Don't. See, Saint, see, let me just tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you ever meet a spiritual man or spiritual woman, stop trying to casualize and come into com commonality. That's my word, commonality of who they is. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't need to hear that you got a son. You're my age. Listen, I'm. I'm not underneath you right now. I'm, I need to think superiorly. See, see, saints, I want you to see this. Jesus got everybody out of Jairus' house because they was going to lower Jesus. He couldn't, he don't want to hear something that's going to make him function lesser than what his dominion can do. You understand? You understand? He didn't want nobody talking to him at ground level because he about to fly. And saints, this just a little wisdom door. You don't need people that talk to you at ground level when you're eagle. God wants you to fly, but they talking to you as if you don't got wings. God wants you to run, but they talking to you as if you don't got legs. God wants you to speak, but they looking at you like you Moses before the anointing comes. Because Moses pre-anointing and Moses post-anointing are two different people. The Moses pre-anointing had a twist tongue. The, the Moses uh, uh, post-anointing, he had the right to speak in tongues. You say, probably how could you say that? You think tongues started in the book of Acts? You think tongues started in the book of Acts? What you think Jesus was doing when he was praying? You think Jesus was pray praying in English? I don't even pray in English. I'm not greater than Jesus. I don't even pray in English. 
That's why some of y'all ain't got no prayers answered, because you pray in English. That's all you do. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah, you're going to live a slow life. All that stuff. Listen, you study your life. How many times you been going to the Father in English? Okay, what have you accomplished going to the Father in English? Sometimes you even repeat the same prayer. Oh, Father, I came to you. I believe you. I receive. Oh, Father, I came to you. I believe you. I receive. Father, I came to you. I believe you. I receive. Thank you, Lord, for doing it for me. Thank you, Lord, for doing it for me. I don't really believe that you did it for me, but I thank you anyway, because that's what the Bible said. In my mind, I'm saying, Lord, why don't you just help me any kind of way? You can rain down money. You can rain down body parts. Why don't you just do this for me? I tell you, thank you, because I'm trying to be fake. I'm trying to be religious. I really don't believe you. I really don't trust you. I'm really getting angry because my situation is getting up to my head and I don't like how I feel and I don't want to wait on you. I want it now. I want my money now. <laughs> Somebody say pumpkin pie. Yeah, yeah, I had some sweet potato pie yesterday. Somebody say pumpkin pie. I ain't had to get the pumpkin pie because I don't want to have no bad memory. Yeah, yeah. Go to God praying in the spirit. You hear me? Go to God. Praying in the spirit. Go to God praying in the spirit. You got to master this. Go to God praying in the spirit. Daughter, you don't speak in tongues? Who raised you? Son, you don't speak in tongues. Who raised you? That's the reason why you got so much issues mentally. You don't pray in the spirit. That's why you're so distracted. You don't pray in the spirit. That's why social media is your God, because you don't pray in the spirit. That's why you get offended, because you don't pray in the spirit. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Praying always, Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying always, praying always, praying always, praying always, praying always with all prayer. All prayer, all prayer, all prayer. All prayer, all prayer, all prayer in the, and supplication in the spirit. And watching there with all perseverance. Watching there with all perseverance. Do you know what this is talking about? This is talking about persevering in praying in the Holy Ghost. I know this realm. Saints, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to look at my ministry and see what I operate in. I stepped into this. The perseverance in prayer is what brings the fire and the glory of God down on your ministry. The, 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 the praying in the Holy Ghost and persevering in praying in the Holy Ghost is what brings the, the, the miracles of Jesus and the signs and wonders of Jesus to work through you. Wow. 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 But see, you, you have to persevere in praying in the spirit so that you could get the mysteries of God unlocked for you. Because remember, while I'm praying in the spirit, I'm speaking mysteries. 
So imagine if I keep on praying in the spirit and I persevere in it, look at how many mysteries I'm carrying. If I pray in the spirit one minute, I have 10 minutes worth of mysteries. If I pray in the spirit 10 minutes, I have a whole hour worth of ministry mysteries. If I pray in the spirit one hour, I have a whole 10 hours worth of mysteries. If I pray in the spirit 10, uh, 10 hours, I have a whole day. A whole uh, two days of mysteries. I'm just giving you a, 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 a mind picture about praying in the spirit. I'm just giving you a, a, a mind picture. Karama correve karamandio. Look at Acts chapter 19, verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Jesus. Acts chapter 19, verse 11 said, And God wrought special miracles by the hands. Not the hands of God. By the hands of Paul. But see, Paul was persevering in praying in the spirit. Paul was praying in the Holy Ghost. Look at Ephesians. Look what it say in chapter one, verse one. It says, Paul, an apostle, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. To the saints which are at Ephesus, to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So Apostle Paul wrote Ephesians. Watch this. This is the epistle of, of Paul, the apostle to the Ephesians. So saints, look. in Ephesians chapter 6. This is Paul telling us that we need in verse 18 to pray always with all of our prayers in the spirit. So watch this. He's praying in the spirit for uh, watch. This is why Acts chapter 19 verse 11 manifests. It says, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So when you see someone moving in miracles by their hands, you better know. That they understand this realm of praying in the spirit with all perseverance. You're going to have to do that, saints. Praying in the spirit with all perseverance. This is one of the secrets to my ministry. Other than sowing seed. Other than the law of surrender. The law of tongues. Because that's the three things that I move in. Surrender, the seed, and tongues. That's the equation for my success. Anybody that does that will be successful. I don't care who you are. God is not a respecter of persons. But he taught me to operate like this. When you're in the law of tongues, Jesus can show you what seed to sow for your finances to be unlocked. You can't even walk in the blessing of the Lord that makes you rich. See, let me tell you something. There's a blessing of the Lord that makes you uh, be born again. There's a blessing of the Lord that makes you yield to conviction. There's a blessing of the Lord that makes you forgive somebody and not be offended or not hold on to bitterness. There's a blessing of the Lord that causes you to obey God concerning your connections or who he tell you to disconnect from. But there's uh, Proverbs 10, 22. There's a blessing that makes you rich. A lot of people have experienced the blessing to know that Jesus is Lord. 
A lot of people have experienced the blessing to know that they need to repent, that they need to give their life over to the Lord for him to rule and reign. But a lot of people have not gotten the revelation that of the blessing making you rich. The blessing putting wads of money in your hands for kingdom purpose. The blessing empowering you to be rich. Financially rich. And, 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 and this blessing of the Lord that makes you rich is a riches anointing. Here's the powerful thing about this. The riches anointing, it was operating in Genesis on Adam. That's what attracted the snake. Because every snake is angry at your prosperity. Every snake is jealous of your opportunity to sow your way out, be rich, be blessed, be prosperous, have abundant life. Every snake is jealous of the fact that you have been given blood-bought authority over finances, over wealth, over riches, over the substance of the earth. Psalm chapter 24 verse 1 says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Wow. 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 So we see here that Jesus, he owns this earth. Matthew chapter 5 verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Oh, my God. Okay, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you telling me blessed are the meek? So if I become meek, I'm going to inherit the earth? Ah, really? So becoming meek gives me the right to own what God is the owner of, the creator of, which is the earth. Did you catch the promise Jesus gave here? Now, I want you to see this. This is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, and 5 is the number of grace. I want you to see that. 5 is the number of grace. So what happens is, it's not that you're just going to inherit the earth. There is a grace, a doubling of grace that's going to come on you, 5-5. Five, five. There's a doubling of favor that's going to come on you for you to inherit the earth. You're not just going to inherit the earth by coincidence. There's an ability of God that's going to move in you at a double level. Like Elisha moved in the double to possess the land where Jezebel and Ahab was ruling. There is a doubling of grace and favor that God is going to give you for you to own back the earth. For you to rule and reign back on the earth. He's going to give you back an ability, a grace, an anointing, his personality, his power, his presence, and the privilege for you to rule the earth as if you're God in God's place. Because he transferred dominion to you. Okay, let's find out what's in the earth. Because the Bible said the meek shall inherit the earth. Matthew chapter 5 verse 5. So what is in the earth? Look at Psalm 104. Because you must know what you're inheriting. Because when they say that I'm going to inherit the earth, is he telling about I'm going to inherit oxygen? Is he talking about I'm going to inherit uh H2O, water. What, what, what is God telling me that I'm going to inherit? Am I going to inherit the mountains, the fountains? Uh, well, I'm going to inherit. That's Psalm 104. Verse 24. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. And the earth is full of your riches.
Did you just catch that? You saw that? Wow. Wow. Did you catch this? Did you catch this? Did you catch this? Look what he just said here. The whole earth. The earth is full of your riches. Did you catch this? Some of y'all need to catch this. There is no money shortage. Wow. The whole earth is full of his riches. Now, Matthew 5, 5 just said, the meek shall inherit the earth. That's what it said. You got that? That's what it just said. The meek shall inherit the earth. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Saints, did you catch this? He said the meek shall inherit the earth. He just let us know that he's going to give us authority over all the riches. That's in the earth. Are you catching this? He just let you know that he going to give you authority over all the riches in the earth. See, money is a reward for giving Jesus all that you are and you have. Meaning he the ruler over your finances. Wow. Wow. There's no shortage of money. There's no shortage of money. There's no shortage of uh, prosperity. Now, I'm noticing something. Today is the 24th. And this verse that I'm reading to you is the 24th verse. I just noticed this. Here's the amazing thing about this is that you are in this right now. Now watch what it say. It says, in wisdom has you made them all. So watch this. God made riches even in wisdom. So watch happen. Watch what happens. When I am in wisdom, When I am in wisdom, I'm in the location where he made all of them. Money, animals, prosperity, the whole earth. Saints, this is so powerful. 
when you step into wisdom, you have access to all of the money that's on earth. Nothing is withheld from you. Saints, do you understand that Joseph, he was over all the money on the earth? They had to come to him to eat during the famine. They had to come to him if they wanted a meal during the famine. He was the distribution system of all money. And he's a man of God. They taught you, oh, you're a child of God. You ain't supposed to be about no money. You ain't supposed to have no money. You're not supposed to be about no money. You ain't supposed to have no money. You ain't supposed to have no money. You ain't gonna have no money. Oh, you people just want some money. You want some money. Ballhead Shaquita, we're going to get some money. You, you, Ballhead Shaquita, you're going to sit right there looking like a chihuahua off of the Taco Bell commercial. You're going to sit right there and not have no money. That's you. You won't be broke. That's your decision. You don't want no money. That's your decision. But I'm serving the true Lord Christ. And the true Lord Christ promised money in the covenant. I'm going to receive what Christ said is mine. Money can be intercepted. Write that down. Money can be intercepted. Do you know? I can sow my way into taking your money. I can intercept money that's scheduled for you and God will give it to me because he that is faithful over a little God will make him rule over much. Have you ever heard somebody say, when I get more money, I'm going to start sowing? You just violated scriptures because the Bible said he that is faithful over a few things. That's how God make you rule over much. He just gave you the equation. So some people say, I'm going to wait till I get much. If you do get much, you get it as a thief. Not as a harvest. Satan is, is increasing you. Listen, watch this. Satanic increase. Satanic increase is one of the most dangerous uh, possessions you could have satanic increase because you don't got the nature of God flowing in you. So when God does come to you and tell you, I want this from you, you're not going to be able to receive it. Here's the powerful thing about this, because the Lord got to put his character in me before he can put his cash on me. The Lord has to pit his character in me before he can pit his cash on me so that I could receive what he gave me and I could use it for the purpose that he gave me without intercepting his agenda and fulfilling my own. What would you do with $50,000? Question. And I want you to think about it. What will you buy if you got $50,000? Let me see if you got the wisdom of what you should buy. What should you buy with $50,000? I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it. What should you buy? What object should you buy with $50,000? Let me see if you're wise enough to know what 
$50,000. And I want you to think about this. I don't really want you to answer. Because there's people that would judge your answer. <laughs> and somebody, somebody see the answer, but be I knew, I knew, she, I knew, I knew, I knew he wasn't. I knew she wasn't. I felt it in my spirit. God showed it to me. God showed it to me. <laughs> he showed me. He showed me that person. He showed me. So don't don't say what you gonna do with it on this line. <laughs> we got a line full of black people, white people, Spanish people, all type of nationalities. You don't know what's gonna pop off. Some people hiding from immigration. You don't know what's going to pop off. Is that favor of God? <laughs> now look at this here. Look at this here. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a secret. You're not supposed to buy nothing with $50,000. That's why many people don't have $50,000 today. There's nothing wise for you to buy with $50,000. There's nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Dada, don't ask your question. I'm trying to cover you. I'm trying to... <laughs> don't ask the question. I'm trying to cover you. Now, I'm trying to... I'm trying to cover you. I'm trying to do something strange. Change this whole perspective. I, I, I'm trying to cover you. Don't ask the question. Let's be his name. <laughs> I'm trying to cover you. <laughs> Dar Dar said, not even, not even the real estate. <laughs> not even the real estate. Here's the thing, $50,000 is God that gave it to me. So here's what you got to do. It has a purpose to it. If I go buy something with it, I abandon the purpose. Are you catching this? If I abandon the purpose for the $50,000, God will never put anything near 50,000 in my hands again. This, I, I'm, I'm telling you this, saints. This is why so many people experience financial miracles and then it never happen again. They need another financial miracle. Because God gave it to me for a purpose. I intercepted his purpose with my purpose because it came in my hands. And I used it for my purpose. And now his purpose never got fulfilled. Therefore, he knows he don't have to give me another 50,000 because he know where it's going to go. Not into his purpose, into my purpose. So why am I going to support you with another 50,000 or 100,000 or 200,000 or 500,000? Or why would I give you a million dollars when you already just proved to me that if I gave you a little, you was going to accomplish your agenda over mine? Saints, I know people that they'll get a lot of money, income tax, and then the next money, next year or probably two years down the line, they complain and they say, IRS is taking all this money from me. I ain't getting no money back on my return. I claim Eldred. I claim Bonquisha. I claim Mad Man. They all on my thing. They still holding up my money. Why is that happening? It doesn't make sense for them to hold up the money. But what's going on? God could drop a large amount of money in my hands. And he won't even press me to do nothing with it. He, he won't see, will you acknowledge me in all my ways? The Bible said, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he shall direct your path. It's amazing, saints, sometimes... We get stuff and we don't even ask the Lord, is this for me? Saints, there's some stuff that come into my hand is not for me. 
As a matter of fact, most stuff that comes into my hands is not for me. I use it for the purpose of Jesus Christ. Are you at the level to know that everything that comes in your hands is not for your hands? Are you at that level? If you're not at the level, you are permitting stagnation to stay where you are forever. You're permitting stagnation to not go forward. Because if you are eating what you currently have, you're content with what you're currently having. So how could you believe God for more when you disrespect the equation for more? I mean, y'all caught that. If you're going to believe God for more, submit to the equation for more. Submit to the equation for more. Respect the equation for more. What, what did Jesus say? Given it shall be given unto you. What did he say in the book of Acts? It's more blessed for you to give than for you to receive. Saints, the true blessing is not in receiving. The true blessing is in giving. Because when I give, I become a God experience to the person I'm giving to. So it's more of a blessing, meaning there's more of an empowerment for me to give because I'm empowering somebody to get the work of God done through my giving. I'm empowering somebody to experience God through my giving. Do you know in heaven, you will get the reward for each person that's saved underneath your man of God's ministry? Do you know that you will get the reward for their soul? Because if you was the one sowing into your man of God, you was the one empowering him to go forth to empower them. It was through you. They were empowered through you. They was inspired through your giving. Your sowing empowers a man of God to release spiritual food. Why do you think the Bible said that there was many women that gave of their substance in Luke chapter 8? There was many women that gave of their substance to Jesus. Even some of these women was married. They was a part of the inspiration system of Jesus. Understand this. Sowers are a part of the inspiration system of Jesus. Let me say this again. Sowers are a part of the inspiration system of Jesus. When you are sower, you inspire Jesus. The seed makes Jesus feel good. I know because there's days when I know the Lord feeling bad. I say, Lord, I'm going to sow a seed. I know you're disturbed. I know you're bothered. I know it. Because I've been around you long enough to catch you. I know. I know when you're bothered. I say, let me, let me do something on the earth that's going to make you happy. Cha-ching. I use money to worship God. It's a higher level of living. It's past lip service. Anybody that ever encountered Prophet Joshua Holmes personally, you can't say I'm a selfish man. There's not a person in the earth that can say I'm a selfish man. I can sit at a restaurant and feed over 400 people and not eat a meal. There's nobody that can say Prophet Joshua Holmes is a selfish man. Number one, the whole secret to having abundance is to forget about you. 
The whole secret of tapping into wealth is to bypass your own existence. To acknowledge someone else's. To bypass your own existence. To acknowledge someone else's. See, uh, unselfishness unlocks wealth. The same way servanthood unlocks wealth. Unselfishness unlocks wealth. Unselfishness unlocks servanthood. You can't even serve until you're unselfish. God can trust you with plenty of money if you can serve someone else's vision. Most times someone else's vision is really your vision, but you haven't got the revelation yet. There were several sons following Elijah as an option. There was one son following Elisha as a life. You'll catch that later. The one that was following Elijah for a life, for a life, had the double portion. The ones that was following as an option was just watching. See, Jesus got to become everything to you. You got to be unselfish. You're going to move in wealth. Wealth doesn't come by work. Let me say this. This is, this is powerful. This is a wisdom door. Write this down. Wealth does not come by you working. Wealth comes by your faith working. You can work without having any faith. Wealth cometh by your faith working. You know, faith work it by love. Love is an atmosphere for God to increase your finances. Love is an atmosphere for God to increase your finances. When the Lord sees that you're all in the love of God, he can increase your finances. But he needs to see that. He needs to see that you have conquered the flesh. He needs to see that you have conquered anxiety to pursue your own will. Saints, do you know there's many of you all, the Lord want to make you rich, but he can't make you rich because you, you got your own agenda. You're not supposed to know what you're going to do if you got $100,000. You're not supposed to know what you're going to do. You're supposed to know who you're going to go to when you get $100,000. Let me tell you something. Let me give you the wisdom of God concerning this. I've had so many times where I would get large amounts of money. <clears throat> and I often would feel a restraint from the Holy Spirit not to touch the money or nothing. I'll find myself living average. And then... I'll do a meeting and I'll find that all that money that I felt restrained from touching was gone. I had to invest it into the gospel. If I was impatient or if I functioned like a lot of people that I know, 
I'm left without the finances for the work of God and I'm left to beg and do fundraising. It's not that that is so wrong, but what happens is wrong decisions often birth that. You hear me? Wrong financial decisions make you have to catch up financially. But see, when you pick Jesus first financially, he'll take care of everything. The seed. I often sow by Holy Spirit instruction. And often I've found that most times when the Holy Spirit have me so, the person not even going to be in my future. But this is the sowing test for a leader. God need to trust you with money so much that he going to test you with sowing into your enemy. But I'm telling you that this is my uh, cross as a leader. God not having, God gave y'all a soul. Y'all have a soul. God made me your soul. I'm saying me as your leader, I'm telling you the sowing, uh, what we would call sowing challenges is not a challenge for me because I've died to myself. <clears throat> you understand this? God has to see that his love has Drowned you before the river of riches can overtake your life. He need to see that his love has drowned you. You got to be drowned in the love of God. You got to be drowning in that love of God. It got to have taken you over. You can't be halfway. Okay, I let the Lord use me here, but then I have to decide what I'm going to do. No, no, no. For Jesus to be your Lord, he got to be Lord over your money. He got to be Lord over your finances. And that's major. It's so easy for you to talk that you love God. But he needs to be over your money. And saints, let me tell you something. Oftentimes, you're trying to pursue pleasure now. To the degree that you miss divine instructions now and you suffer later. I don't want to come into my comfort zone before time. <laughs> I don't want to come into my satisfaction before time. Because what seems like it's satisfactory, what seems like it's comfort will end up in regret, tribulation, trouble, trial, and backlash. Which is ultimately deception. And saints, this is how Satan keep you out of wealth. Through having you move in financial deception today. Financial deception causes you to have a wrong approach to the money that you have. Financial deception causes you to come into wrong sowing decisions. Financial deception will make you not sow. Financial deception 
will make you miss scheduled money that God wants to overflow in your life. Financial deception will make you your own Lord over your own finances. You'll never hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Financial deception blocks out the voice of God concerning how to distribute your money. God going to pick seed in your hand. He going to do it. Your job is to discern what is seed. There's so many people say, Lord, I'm a sow, I'm a sow, I'm a sow. And then God put money in their hand. They're not sowing. They say, I need more money. No. Understand that more money requires you to be a sower. Remember, the Bible said he gives seed to the sower. So watch this. He gives more money to the sower. So imagine if God gives me and I eat my seed. How could he give me more seed when I already proven to him that I, I am someone that eats my seed? How could God give me more seed when I just proved to him that I am someone that will disrespect that law of seed and I'll take it for myself? I'm not going to accomplish your agenda, Jesus. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to let you give it to me and I'm going to eat it up. I ain't going to function in releasing it to you or none of that. I'm going to take it for myself. So what happens to me in the future? Can God trust you with large money? You got to ask yourself that question. And before you can answer it, can he trust you with small money? Saints, I had to sow my way out of $5. I had to sow my way out of $20. I remember I would watch telethons, TBN, and I would say, wow. When I would hear the man of God say give, I said, Jesus, I wish that was me. Now I was a little boy. You understand? So, so mostly your parents hold the seed. So my mother would say, she said, son, you know, I'm paying, I'm paying this seed and it's for you. I was like, thank you, mother. But in the back of my mind, like, ah! Because I wanted to sow it myself. I wanted to see how it felt. So when we, when my mother used to go to this church, she was faithful and she was so she was so there. She eventually left when she met Jesus. Uh, uh, and so she would give me money. I, I, I would take the money and she told me I could do what I want with the money. So I started sowing, started experiencing miracles with finances. And I would have all these clothes because I wanted to buy clothes with the money, but I would sew it. And I would tell Jesus, I said, Jesus, I'm sewing this unto you. I want to buy me some brand new shirts. I want to, I, I like me some clothes. Since I like clothes, I like, I like, you know, I often get caught at customs because they want to do an investigation. I almost got hemmed up in Atlanta because they wanted to say that I had I had too much cash on me. But the purpose of the cash is that there's a lot of things that I do in JM that require JHM that requires money. Oftentimes your your card will get blocked. They call it fraud. They call it fraud. Look at this. This this is a wad of money here. I'm sewing this. This is supposed to get sewn. This is a guap of money here. And this is even prior to my Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. I'm ever sewing. So so when I hear people talking about 
not sowing. I'm like, come on. This life is all about sowing money, sowing yourself. It's all about sowing. You see this? This is not for me. This is for Jesus and his assignment. You understand this? If this get into your hands, what will you do? You got your own agenda. Oh, I got to pay off this. I got to pay off that. You got to pay off what? If you had a revelation, you would know that Jesus already paid it off when he was at the cross. So if I pit Jesus first, he going to do it for me. What I've been needing to be done. See, you have to sow out of revelation, not obligation. Let me tell you something. If you sow out of obligation, you're going to get weary. It's not about sowing out of obligation. It's about sowing out of revelation. You got to have a revelation that Jehovah Jireh is receiving the seed. If you don't, you're going to see that you're giving it to a man. If you don't, you're going to see that you, you're giving it to a person. You have to get a revelation that you're giving it to Jesus himself. He's taking the seed. He's multiplying the seed so that's what second Chron uh, uh, Corinthians chapter nine tells us he multiplies the seed sown. Why am I showing you money? Cause I'm free. See some of y'all, you're not free with money. This has become your God. If you get money like this, you're not going to hear Jesus. You only hear Jesus when you got this. This is the only time you hear Jesus. When you got this, this is when you hear Jesus. When you get this, you don't hear Jesus no more. You hear your bills. You, you hear what you got to accomplish. You hear, I'm going to buy a new car. Saints, I've known people that went go buy a car every time they got income tax. I grew up knowing people like that. I used to ask my mother. She said, she said, son, they, I said, mother, how come they, they got... They just had a car. They got a new car. Some of y'all do that. And let, let me tell you something. How much money have you wasted? You don't even got that same car today. Huh? Huh? Saints, let me tell you something. Do you know? Do you know? The abuse of money is anti-sowing. Write that down. Write that down. I tell the bank... Even though I'm sowing the money, I tell the bank to give me the money, new money, because I don't want no money that smell like no thong to thong to thong, none of that. <laughs> don't, don't, no, I, don't want, I don't want no mildew on no cash. Man, I got, I got to touch this, man. Even though it ain't going to be in my hand for long, I'm going to touch that the mouth. Give me some new cash. Give me that. I want to hear the. I want to hear the. I ain't say tun tun. Don't, don't start nothing. It won't be nothing. Leave me alone. Because <laughs> uh, uh, some money smell like yesterday bra. Saw a lady, sometime the lady up in San Antonio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hold on, let me get my bra. Come on. All right. It's, it's, I want five on. I want five on pump. Uh, I, I want 45 on pump 47. Nah, take that dollar back. Don't take it. Then then he won't give it to you when you get next in line. Uh, you got change? Okay, here you go. Uh, you want this one? No, I don't want that one. That came out of a titty, man. Man, look back there, man. I know you got about two more tens. You Give me two more tens. I, these ones ain't my friends. Give me two more tens. She didn't have a bra. She had all this residue right there. No, nah, come on, man. Come on, man. That was it's hot outside, man. You see the weather, man. There ain't no coldness, no none of that. There ain't no coldness, no none of that. It ain't no coldness, no none of that. It ain't below fifty degrees or none of that. You hear me? And you gonna have to take that one back. He took it back and thought. No, brother, did you just, hey, 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 wait, did you just, you, now I'm counting the money, brother, I'm counting the money. No, you just, <laughs> hey, hey, no, you just, wait a minute, you just, be, you just lift your head from the same guy. Tell us 
said, no, I got to count the money, brother. I got to count the money. I got to count the money. You ever seen people up there counting money and trying to lick their finger? Like, nah, take that back, brother. You got, you got halitosis at the breath. I don't want it to be transferred to me. You just lick mine. No, nah, don't lick mine. Don't lick mine. These ain't lickable. Take this back, man. I don't, I don't want it. Take everything. I don't want it. Travis Green, yeah. I don't need it. God. Give you praise. Travis Green. Now, I'm going to tell you like this here. I'm going to tell you like this here. I'm going to tell you like this here. <laughs> I'm going to tell you like this here. Sewing unlocks favor out of your life. <laughs> Sewing unlocks favor out of your life that you never saw before. Let me tell you something. You know, I'm scheduled to be on, uh, you know, I'm scheduled to be on the Word Network on the 4th. You know that, right? If I happen to take it, if I'm, ha if I happen to take it with, uh, with Bishop Bloomer. If, if, if I happen to take it. All right. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. When you are sowing. You cause God to open multiple doors for you. I want you to hear this. God will protect you. You won't have to even pray for protection. The protection will already be on you. Money is a secret to unlocking God's protection. You understand this? Huh? Huh? Money is a secret to unlocking angelic protection on your life. Angels will defend you when your eyes can't see was scheduled behind your back. Sowing is a deliverance ministry because it delivers you and it delivers those that are assigned to you in the future. I want you to understand this. Sowing not only delivers you, it delivers those that are assigned to you in the future. Sowing increases your personal anointing. Sowing brings me closer to Jesus and his heart. Because I have to have a pure heart if I'm going to sow. So my heart can become one with his heart and detect what his heart is feeling. So, so watch this. People that sow much have a quicker sensitivity to the Lord Jesus. We know when he displeased. We know when he not anything. We know when he disturbed. We know when he rejects somebody. We know when he accepts somebody. We know when something is being done that really shouldn't be done. Sowing will give you the grace to even detect things about yourself that you need to fix in the presence of God. Sowing will quicken you. It will convict you. Sowing will convict you of flaws that you have not confronted. Sowing will show you what side of your life you have not been trusting God with. Do you know this? Sowing will show you what side of your life you have not been trusting God with. What side of your life you're still in control of fully. You not you haven't given that side over to Jesus. That side, you're trying to guard it. You're trying to protect it. You're trying to make your life safe. You're trying to keep your life safe. Sowing 
Sowing makes you spiritual in your responses to warfare. Sowing makes you spiritual in your responses to warfare. Look what the Bible says in Galatians 6.1, I believe. Galatians 6.1. He said, those of you that are spiritual, because not everybody is spiritual. Those of you that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness so that you might not be tempted. So watch this. Be careful your attitude when you deal with people that you believe have fallen. Because if you got an attitude that displeases God, you can open up a door to that same spirit. That's why I say restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, lest you also be tempted. Because watch this, pride attracts foreign demons to your personal city. How many of y'all caught that? How many of y'all caught that? Pride attracts foreign demons to your personal city. That demon can be in China, but your wrong attitude can attract a China demon to reach you. Be careful of your attitude. Your attitude is not always God. Sometimes the only old you in you is your attitude. Sometimes the only thing stopping you from being the woman you're supposed to be is your attitude. That's the only thing. God already ruled over everything else is your attitude. As a man, you got to be careful of your attitude. Adapting to the Jesus attitude as a man. The word of the week is mercy. The word of this week, the word of next week is mercy. Practice it. Practice it. Practice it. Have you ever seen a thief begin to look at somebody and say, oh, man, they shouldn't have did that. Crazy as I don't know what, man. They're up there always. Look at, look at what they did. That's wrong. But you was a thief. Different sin, but still sinners. Huh? And you li listen, watch, watch people. You know, they preachers, man. They always up there. No, nah, man. I, I, nah, I went to church. He up there to ask for two offerings. Now I was about to offer it to him, but then he offered it twice. He did two offerings. You got lighter. Yeah, when, I'm telling you, man. They be pimping, man. They... And I had to take a smoke break. You know, you know, my nicotine started kicking in. I, my nicotine itch started kicking in, and you know what I'm saying. I had to deal. I had to deal with that demon. I got there. Had I got that demon? That demon was getting out of hand up there, taunting for two offerings. And wait till the praise break come. That's what happened. Wait till the praise break come. Everybody was dancing, shouting. I heard him say it twice. He thought I didn't catch it, but I was in the spirit. You got a lighter? Mine's almost finished. Now look at this. He's so proud he can't see that he need mercy. You know people like that in your life. They smoking a full-blown black amount. You know, God told me you better be careful of these false prophets. I'm going to tell you that right now. You got a light on you? Mine's almost finished. I was at doing a praise break at the, 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 the church. The pastor that I was friends with 12 years kept, and he asked for two offerings. 
You better be careful of these false prophets. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because I found that mines after 12 years. He was a false prophet. Because he asked for two offerings. And he only had one. One offering he needed. We just bought him a new pair of suits last week on Pastor's Appreciation Day. And Pastor Appreciation Day, we brought, we, brought, we brought him a suit. They don't see that they need mercy. They don't see that their life is not qualified to try to even critique anybody. But pride, 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 develop mercy, develop mercy. You can't be a virtuous woman if you're not merciful. You cannot be God's man if you're not merciful. Develop mercy. I have a whole ministry full of that. Ain't nobody can tell me about mercy. I have a whole ministry full of that. What you gonna say? What that got to do with me, punk? What that got to do with me, punk? You got a whole ministry full of mercy. Huh? Be God to somebody. Be Jesus to somebody. What if the person that committed suicide met somebody that could be Jesus to them? What if they got in contact with somebody that could be Jesus to them? What if somebody spoke to that depressed woman, that depressed man that's contemplating to cut themselves and kill themselves? What if they encountered somebody that could be Jesus to them? Be merciful. Have you ever seen somebody, you know? I knew somebody. That had something take place in their life. That I know could I have been avoided. But you think I rebuked them and said, hey, you know better. Listen, Hoppo. What that got to do with me, punk? You want a piece of me? <laughs> you want a piece of me? If you would have listened to me, that would not have happened, that boy. If you would have listened to me, that would not have happened, that boy. You want a piece of me? What I got to do with me, punk? You want a piece of me? Huh? You should have listened to me, ba. I'm going to tell you again, ba. That's what you get, ba. Don't call me again, ba. I hope this happened to you again, ba. You need to learn your lesson now. Huh? What you say? The freaks come out at night. What, what, what? We don't got no time for that, ba. That's what you get for not listening to my voice, man. You turn into about seven characters. You done turn to Bob Marley last. Let's get together and be all right. One love, one love, one love. <laughs> Let's get together and be all right. One love. One love, one love, one love. <laughs> Let's get together. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, ah, uh, the Jamaican son. Doot, 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 doot. What? Don't want. What? Want? <laughs> oh, 
all of their beats sound the same. Saints, like, like Saints, you know the Spanish people, they got the same. Doom, tuka, doom, tuka, doom. All of their songs sound the same. I was telling Juan, I said, watch, the next song that come on going to sound the same like this one. Doom, tuka, doom, tuka, doom, tuka, doom. And it's just a different lyrics, but it's the same. <laughs> It's a different, I mean, y'all recognize that. You turn to the Spanish channel. Like, hey, 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 hey. You trying to trick me. I asked you to play the next song. You played the next song. It's still the same thing. Trying to trick me. You be at a Spanish concert. You think he going to pull out another song. One man. One man. He done turn into us. He done turn into a Jamaican. Like, hey, what? I'm confused here. You go to a Spanish concert. They be playing the same song. You be there a whole hour. Like, this sound like the same song. But I'm gonna get with it. I paid a hundred dollars for this concert. Come on, girl, turn around. <laughs> Girl, turn around. I know it's raining outside, but we ain't got no time for this mess. Come on now. They go to the next song. Girl, I know this is a sad song, but come on, girl. Let's get it with it. Come on. Girl, turn around. Come on. Come on. Let's get around with this. They go to the third song. Doom, tuk, doom, tuk, doom, <laughs> the fourth song. Doom, tuk, doom, <laughs> hey, I want to play my new single. Y'all ready? Drop that beat. Doom, tuk, doom, 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 doom. <laughs> oh. Same day he come back online. Y'all, y'all ready? We about to close out tonight. Where my people at? Now, I want to shout out all this song for all y'all that came out of here. Drop that beat, DJ. <laughs> you be up in there like, hey, come on, come on. Listen, this is, this might be the different song. We need a different song. I'm going to get my refund, but I'm going to get this dance. <laughs> I can't go to no Latino concert, man. The song be the same. Be tricking you, making you think they got seven songs. It's just the same song extended. <laughs> and then when you go to a faster team, <laughs> is this a praise break or what? Just let me know. I done pit my church hair down. I pit my church shoes down. I ain't doing none of that tonight. Jamaican songs the same way. Bump, 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 bump. <laughs> A Chinese girl come run and come hang on in the nanny hang. Like brother, I heard you on the cops when the cops started chasing folk. I heard you. You just say, "I saw the wine sing now she can." You the same man. <laughs> You the same man that did bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? That was you. <laughs> you tried to trick the game up. We know it's you. Oh, there you try to switch, try to do another song. You the same man. Don't try to trick us, man. That's called deception. You trying to deceive? <laughs> you trying try to deceive us? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> hey man, you want me to go to my second song now? Hold on now, let me get my dress on, man. You want me to go to my second song now, man? We're going to the second song now. Everybody lift your hands up in the air, no. Everybody, man. Boom, boom, boom. Give me that beat, DJ. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> you be out there 
there dancing with your leg. Like, oh, boom, chicka, boom, boom, boom. Girl, this is the same song that I heard last. Come on, come on, don't think about it. Boom, chicka, boom. Then I paid a hundred dollars for this one. We gonna dance a boom, chicka, boom. Man, I'm about to go to my third song. Drop that beat. Bam, bam, bam. Boom, tika, boom, boom. <laughs> Be hypnotizing you. I ain't going to no Jamaican concerts. I ain't going to no, no, no Latino concerts because the beat be the same. <sighs> Since you know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> You're you not really at no Jamaican concert and take talk. Bum, bum, bum. Like, hey, hey, what? Is they trying to tell us that ISIS is around the corner or what? Is they trying to give us a signal that something about to happen here, that we need to get out of here? What, what, why he just said bum, bum, bum? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Where the bomb at? Where the bomb? <laughs> now, it's a crazy thing. If you gonna go to a Jamaican, <laughs> if you gonna go to a Jamaican concert, you gonna have to be all right with it smelling like armpits. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tell you this right. <laughs> you gonna you gonna you gonna have to be okay with it smelling like armpits, cause they they don't believe in their deodorant ministry. They don't believe in uh icy hot patch or none of that. They don't believe it. Nah, they don't. Nah, they ain't, they ain't going, they ain't going to try to fix that or none of that. Y'all going to be up there dancing, smelling on piss, like. <laughs> Judge Joe Brown on the side of the street talks him. Y'all going to come up in here smelling like egg and all at the armpits. You know that there's a Dollar General that I own. There's a Dollar General that I own that you could have got you some deodorant for five cent or five cent or less. For five cent or less, you could have got it. Now don't back talk me. I I I I would have got you the deodorant before you came. And you ever had an older person try to cuss you out, you ain't know they was going to have a stroke, so you just left them alone, even though they was wrong. You just let them say what they had to say. You took it in. Nah, you right. Yeah, I'd rather take this than take 25 to life. Nah, because then you, your neck vein is popping out. I went to the doctor. They told you that your blood pressure was high. I ain't going to fool with it. Not, not, nah, nah, I ain't fooling with it. I agree. You ain't gonna dial my watch, nah. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna leave first. I'm gonna leave first, and then, then, then I'm. I'm gonna tell you a piece of my mind. Now I'm gonna call you. Make sure your phone is on, cause I, I'm gonna give you my part when I'm gone. And I got. I'm gonna make sure I take a picture, the location where I'm at. I'm gonna even post it on Instagram that I got a location right there. So around this time, something happened to you, you. One thing you want to catch about in heaven, there'll be Jamaican food, there'll be Mexican food, there'll be food according to culture. If you have a, a certain culture that you grew up in, you Vietnamese, whatever food that you eat, there'll be a section of food of that in, in heaven. You say, Prophet, how can you say they're going to be eating? You remember when Jesus rose from the dead? That was the first thing that he began to do. One of the things he dealt with. Remember, he dealt with food. He appeared to them and ate fish with them. How? How? How did Jesus, he comes back in a glorified body, a brand new body, and he eat it. He asked them, where the food at? So there's going to be all type of food in heaven. And, and if we're going to be feasting, you ain't going to have to worry about your weight, fat in your back, fat back, all of that. 
How many of y'all up there talking to my back fat? I don't know what no back fat is. Is that a trick question? Well, something else is fat, but I ain't, we ain't talking about that. You said your back. <laughs> nah, look at this here. <laughs> nah, I think, I think all the ladies talk like that. I think all the ladies be talking like that. Talking about in my back fat. We ain't looking at your back fat. We're looking at below your back. <laughs> you ain't even got to have a back. You ain't no back fat. Now your back skinny. I ain't I'm just going to tell you something and make it be all right. Keep on eating all this high blood pressure food. You ain't going to fit your high heels very soon. I'm, that's a word for somebody. That's a word for somebody on this line. You keep on eating all them hot foods and all them, putting all that, that salt on yourself. You won't be able to fit your high heels. You better, them the only heels you got that you like. <laughs> you better let, let them do. Let them endure to the end and be saved. Now, here's, here's what I want. Glory money. The earth can't stop that from getting to you. Glory money. Huh? Somebody said Chris Rock. I don't really think Chris Rock is funny. I, res I respect what he do, but I don't really think Chris Rock is funny. I really don't. I mean, I'm just telling you my personal thing. I just never thought that. I don't see why people thought Chris Rock was funny. But I understand he funny for the time that he was with. I I just think that when I listen, when I had listened to him, I just heard a bunch of profanity. I ain't hear nothing that was funny. Huh? I just I <sighs> I, I, I didn't laugh not one time. I would just, you know, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, you know what I'm saying? But he do got a unique voice and he got a unique voice. And that's his crab, so. So who like him? You free to like him. Eh? You think he funny? That's a blessing. But to me, I just... Yeah. I just think like, dog, you ever listen to a comedian? You was trying to give them the benefit of a doubt. I try to give certain comedians the benefit of doubt. And I just like, man, that's. No, nah, I like profanity, like. <laughs> You should get to know me. I like profanity. <laughs> look, look, he having a whole conversation with me. I can't believe that Cat Williams is allowed on television. <laughs> you done interviewed me. Are you a news reporter or what? You done interviewed me live. You done tricked me. <laughs> We having a conversation. Don't worry about us. I can't believe that he got invited on TV either. Cat Williams. I don't know how cats got and the pets got on camera. I don't know how a cat got on camera. They used to call cat many things. Huh? So some people say that you got a cat. Wait, wait. Which one is you talking about? <laughs> wait, which? Which one is you talking about? Are you, I need some clarification about this. 
Now, look at this here. Look, 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 look. You know, over in the island, that's how they talk. <laughs> Girl, she gave them cotton now. <laughs> what? Wait, who gave what? what? What happened over there? She brought her now. She don't got no house manners, no. Yeah, she grew up in the church. I grew up in the church. <laughs> me see on Sunday school. Me see her legs. Me see her legs was all out. Me know something was happening. <laughs> Call me now. Now, Psalm <laughs> chapter. <laughs> she put her legs on. No lotion. It was ashy. It was what? Ashy. What? It was ashy. <laughs> the crease of her hands, no. She had no muster. <laughs> it was Ashi. <laughs> what it was? Ashi. What do you want from me? Now, hey, my dad's hey, where, where you coming from? <laughs> Look at Psalm. Look at Psalm 104, verse 24. So you see right here how manifold are your works. <laughs> <laughs> In wisdom thou hast made them all. The earth is full of the, your riches. So here you see, saints, you see that the earth is full of the riches of God. Riches is your divine covenant. You have a right to riches. You have a right to be rich, to have overflowing money. Say, Father, I receive your plan to overflow my money. I receive your plan to overflow my money. Mm, mm, mm. Now I want to point out something in Psalm 112. Because I sow this seed a lot. 112 and 3 cents. I've been sowing it for years now. And I've seen many returns on this. Psalm 112, and some of you all in the ministry, you sow this seed as well. You need to hear this. Psalm 112, look what it say. Praise ye the Lord, verse 1. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord always. Or, or blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. It says that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Saints, I want you to see this. This man that fears the Lord, he loves giving. He loves sowing. He, sowing is not an obligation. It's a liberation. He's enjoying every instruction God gives him. See, saints, this is where you, your attitude going to have to be right if you're going to walk in wealth. If you're going to walk in riches. You're going to have to be right with God. And you're going to have to love the fact that God is instructing you and telling you how to spend money, how to sow your money, what seed to sow. You got to be okay with that. Look at this text here. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. So when I fear the Lord, look what happens. I delight greatly in his commandments. So watch, when the Lord say give, that don't make me angry. When he say give, I say, wow, let me think of a large seed that I can show my honor towards God like Solomon. Because Solomon did this. Solomon sold a thousand burnt offerings and God said, what do you want me to do? Imagine this. He sold 
a thousand burnt offerings. And God asks him, what does he want? Do you know he could have said, Lord, I want me some. Uh... Never mind, I can't talk about that. Lord, I want me some money. Give me, give me about, I want two Cheetos. Hot Cheetos, I want. Um, uh, give me some socks now because it's going to get cold in Jerusalem. Uh, I want you to uh, give me some, uh, give me some, uh, you know, give me some, uh, give me some swimming, swimming clothes because I'm about to go swimming. Don't ask me which swimming I'm going to do, but I'm about to do one. There's an ocean outside. It's a, there's a pool. There's a community pool in Jerusalem. The pool of Shalom. Uh, there's a pool with the six porches, five porches, all of that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Give me a barber because, you know, I don't want my hairline back there. While I'm reading the book of James, I don't want it to look like, you know, I'm in James. You know, I'm in King James. You see that there. You see how I just go all together, Father? I don't want none of that. None of that to happen to me. All right, so I need a barber now. While I'm reading King James, so I don't get no none of that. He didn't ask God for none of it. But wisdom, watch. When he asked God for wisdom, this is what he did. Watch this. Psalm 104, verse 24. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Look what he just did. When Solomon asked God for wisdom, he received everything that God had made. Saints, saints, when he asked God for wisdom, because God, remember, God made all things in wisdom. So watch this. Instead of Solomon asking God for all things, he asked him for wisdom in which all things were. Wow. So when he asked for wisdom, God gave him all the wives. When he asked for wisdom, God gave him all the money. When he asked for wisdom, God gave him all of the honor, the respect, the praises of people. I'm about to say something that's going to shock you. You ain't never heard this a day in your life because I ain't never heard it a day in my life until Jesus told me. Proverbs 27 verse 2 says, let another man praise you. You know, the Bible said that you can receive praise. God is not in an issue with you praising your man of God. The woman praised King David. They said he killed tens of thousands. In the Old Testament, all of King Solomon's servants praised him. The Bible said the Queen of Sheba saw all of his servants were happy in serving him and rejoicing before him. All of them were praising him. Why does the devil get mad when you praise your man of God? Because Satan was a praiser, but now he has been uh, he has been demoted. He no longer has that privilege. God has removed his privilege to praise. That's why when he sees anybody operating in praise, it aggravates him. It makes him mad because he himself cannot praise anymore. God does not receive any praise from Satan. Now look at this. Look at verse two, Proverbs 27, verse two. Let another man praise thee. The Bible say that you can receive praise. Watch, you, you think that I'm just talking about men? You think I'm being a sexist, right? Watch this here. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 31. 
Let's go to Proverbs chapter 31. Look what it say here. 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 I'm going to let you look when I find what it say here. Let me find what it say here. Let me look what I say here. Let me find what I'm saying here. Proverbs chapter 31. Let's, let's, look, let's, look, at, let's look at it together. That's how the preacher be preaching. Say, if you ever saw the preacher preaching like that. Come on now, let's go right here. Let's go right here. Let's go right here. Come on now. Come on now, let's go right here. Let me find where we're going. Wait a minute. Uh, somebody turned my page. Uh, I think it was my assistant when I turned around. Yeah, I saw you walking around here. Why you was walking around here? What's in my notes? Give me my notes. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Nah, you, nah, you, don't get the devil in this. Now look at this here. Look at this here. Look what it's saying. Proverbs 31, verse 31. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. It's talking about you, virtuous woman. It's talking about you. It's talking about the virtuous woman. It's Proverbs 31. Look what it's telling you. Huh? It's talking about your receiving praise from your own works. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. It's talking about you receiving praise from your own works. You, how many of y'all catching this? This talking about you, Sister Sledge. <laughs> now nah, y'all ain't Sister Sledge. I gotta, I gotta save that. <laughs> My mind is animated. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yikati. Now uh let's go here when I find out where we're supposed to go. Let's let's look at this here. <laughs> now let's go here when I find out. Let me let me see how let me see how let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, let me see right here. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you ever been around one of them old players when they're trying to text you? Talking, What's your number? <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Give me, give, me, give me one second now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right now, uh, how your mama doing? No, 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 no! Don't give me her number, cause I ain't, I ain't trying to get her number. Nah, she out there. She, I tried to tell. Nah, no, no. I was there when you were born. Yeah, I was at the hospital. <laughs> I, 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 I was at the hospital, and you came out. You were six pounds, twenty five ounces. <laughs> You had small body, but you had a big old head. That's what happened. <laughs> no, nah, don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, nah, no, nah, I was there. I was there when you were born. You know what I'm saying? I held you for a couple minutes. Your mama didn't know what the father was. That's what happened. And so I just came just in case because I was going to church. I was one of them elders in our bar. I was one of them elders, and I just wanted to... Uh, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be there for a good cause. You know what I'm saying? Just in case. I ain't want the good Lord to judge me. Yeah, so I was there. But I, we ain't talking about that. What's your number now? What's your number now? Like, uh, where you going, girl? <laughs> they be looking all in their glasses like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
If you see a... <laughs> Girl, you still got that big head today, girl. But I still love you now. I'm going to put a bag on you. <laughs> girl, nah, I ain't worried about it. I got a, I got a helmet. <laughs> I used to play college football. You ain't know that, did you? Uh-huh. I got a helmet right in the back of my, my right in my back of my, uh, my, my trunk. You know what I'm saying? I got a, got a. Got a helmet back there just in case. <laughs> we don't want you to have no injuries or none of that. <laughs> got a small body. You still got a small body and a big head. <laughs> but I still love you though. You know what I'm saying? Still got a small body and a big head. You know, small head. Be bullet. Please made a song after you got Bebo Lottie. Got more head than he got body. So we gotta switch it up. Bebo Lottie got more head than she got body. You know what I'm saying? We gotta switch it up. Now what she said. Look, look, look at Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Huh? Look at this here. It says, But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. <laughs> Calling a superhead. <laughs> but a woman that feareth the Lord. <laughs> she shall be praised. So God let us know that both a man and a woman. He, he, so, so you females on here is not just one sided. Huh? I'm so excited. <laughs> it's talking about if you're a virtuous woman as well. So. So uh, Proverbs chapter 27, verse two said, let another man praise you. Let another man praise you. Let another man praise you. It's the will of God for you to receive praise. Yeah, God rewards you. He rewards you when you are what the Bible says you're supposed to be. See, saints, a lot of you are. People don't understand our relationship. You know me from your encounters with me. You judge by love. You judge according to my generosity towards you. You judge by my work ethic, how I labor among you. Them niggas don't know nothing. <laughs> them niggas don't know nothing but the bald head pastor that's feeding them the same message every Sunday. That's all they know. You ever see people arguing, where's that in the Bible? Okay, it's right here in Isaiah. Well, they, it didn't mean that. You just asked where it was in the Bible, Stacy. And it's always the people with no edges that's always got something to say. Watch them. They ain't got no edges. Where's that in the Bible? It's right here. Oh, it did, but it didn't mean that. But you didn't know it was in the Bible. Because you underneath a pastor that done passed away a long time. <laughs> he preaching you this old time religion. So you hear a young man preaching on fresh stuff. You mad. And then all my flock packing the same heat as me. All my people packing the same heat as me. You mad? Dynamite up in hell. Say another word. Hmm? You packing heat? 
You mad? Cause we packing heat. You got something fresh? Huh? And kill your flesh. Huh? Remove your stress. You mad? It's the will of God for you to praise your man of God. You're supposed to praise your man of God. If you're not praising your man of God, who raised you? If you're not praising your man of God, them women that was in David's day will laugh at you. They'll laugh at you because they praise their men of God. They praise all of Solomon's, his men and his woman. And now he wasn't sleeping with the men. But he, I had to clarify that because some of y'all boondaggers, y'all ain't, y'all going to learn today. He wasn't sleeping with the men. There's not a hole for it to fit nowhere. I'll tell you that right now. No, that, this, I just had to clarify this because he wasn't doing nothing with the men. I, I just won't clarify that. He ain't had nothing going on <laughs> with the men at all. But the woman and the men were both praising Solomon, praising David, praising their king is the will of God. It's watch what it say. Let another man praise you. It didn't say stop him from praising you. Look at this. Look at Proverbs chapter 27 verse 2. It didn't say stop somebody from praising you. It said, let them praise you. This the Bible. The Bible said, do the word in James chapter one, 22 and on. It's telling you what the Bible says here. It says, let another man praise you. The Bible didn't say, stop my people from praising me. The Bible said, let them praise me. See, people don't understand what a man of God is. They think that a man of God is some human with a jingling, jingling. A man of God is God. If God send them to you, he is them to you. How you respond to them, you respond to God. If you praise them, you're praising God. If you honor them, you're honoring God. If you thank them, you're thanking God. If you serve them, you're serving God. You submit to them, you're submitting to God. You stay by them, you're staying with God. There's people leave their man of God and think God is with them. The spirit is stupid. How many people you know like that? Stupid. Watch how they wander. They got five men of God now. They got 25 men of God that they following. They don't know nothing. Then they sneak on the same man of God's videos to watch what he got to say because they need a word. They still ain't satisfied. Who raised you? Who bewitched you? You understand? You understand? You understand? Let another man praise you. Let another man praise you. Let another man praise you. This is the Bible. Let another man praise you. This is the Bible. Let another man praise you. It didn't say stop them from praising you. It said let another man praise you. That's why when you honor your man of God, you feel so good. That's why when you stick by your man of God, you feel so good. Let me tell you something. Betrayal does feel good. But if you study betrayal, watch how it makes you feel. Saints, do you know when, 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 when Peter said, I don't know no Jesus, man. I went with him. You know, it felt good at the time. But then when he thought about it, he like, wow, this is the Jesus that gave me a chance. This is the Jesus that when everybody didn't know who I was, he gave me purpose. He gave me meaning. He gave me 
an agenda for my life daily. I had inspiration that I never knew I could have. I had joy unspeakable. I laughed in the presence of Jesus. I knew secrets in the presence of Jesus. My eyes was opened up to see things in the presence of Jesus. I felt the fire of God in the presence of Jesus because even John the Baptist said there was coming one mightier than I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I experienced things with Jesus that I never knew were possible. And saints, he had to live with that. And he thought it was all over with him. And then Jesus came on the scene and said, tell Peter to go. I go before him in Galilee. And Peter was so happy that he had Jesus on his side. Jesus let him feel that temporary time where he went away and he did not let him feel his presence to let Peter see, hey, Peter, are you okay with living without me? Are you okay without having me in your life? Could you make it without me? Are you okay with living underneath Satan's grip with none of my presence, none of my word, none of my impartation, none of my love, none of my power, my presence, my spirit, my blessing, my glory, my honor, my grace, my favor, my life? He realized, Peter, Jesus is all I want. Jesus said, now, do you love me? He said, yes, I love you. Do you love me? Now, yes, I love you. Do you love me? Jesus is now telling him, hey, 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 now you're getting a chance for you to love me. Because, listen, I'm supposed to be connected to you. But if you don't love me, me and you can't be connected. You're supposed to be in my future. But if you don't love me, I can't let you be in my future. I got your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. But if you don't love me, I got to take your name out of this Lamb's Book of Life. I, I, I got manifestations and visitations I want to show you. But if you do not love me, I can't manifest myself. I can't visit you. I got blessings and money that I want to release to your life. But if you do not love me, I can't bless you and release these blessings to your life. I need you to show me your love. What? So, 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 so when Peter stepped, into loving Jesus. Look how the power begin to flow. The Holy Ghost begin to flow. Remember the loyalty begin to flow. They said denounce this Jesus. Stop preaching up. What did Peter say? I must obey God not man. I'm going to keep on preaching this Jesus. I'm going to keep on preaching this Jesus. Nah I, I learned my lesson. I ain't playing around with the devil. Devil up there give you this good little feeling for a couple seconds. Then you doggone tormented. Your heart beating all doggone fast. You can't feel your legs, your hair up there losing hair. You can't eat good. You can't drink good. Your mind messed up. You're tormenting your head. You can't even put your thong on. What's going on? Something done gone wrong. Listen. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, 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 woo. I'm there wilding like a mug. I'm just talking, Father, forgive me. I don't know what I did wrong, Lord. I tried to ask you to forgive me, Father. Please don't let me go to hell. And to Jesus, please. Please, Father, in Jesus' name, I release all of my sins and iniquities, Father. In Jesus' name, I release all of them. Father, Father, 55, 45, 45, 45, 50, 50, 50, 50. Now turn to our auction. Then turn into an auction. Now. Let God have his way with you. Now, you know, God, when he give you a connection, he let you know who your connection is. You be foolish to miss. People going around in circles. You, you, you let saints, people that, people that miss God, they don't go nowhere in life. They continually searching. They still trying to find their way. Let me tell you something. Jesus hides himself in a man sent to your life. If you reject the man, you reject Jesus. Ain't no other way around it. God did not let Abraham give him a drop of water nor release him from hell. 
Abraham said to him, they have the prophets down there. If you want your family to be saved, there's a prophet going to be sent to your family. If they don't receive that prophet, they're going to hell. It's in the Bible. Abraham did that. He told him, and Abraham can't be sinning because he's in paradise. Abraham tells him, if you don't listen to this man of God, you're going to end up in hell. I don't care who you are. You're going to end up in hell. Your man of God is a gift to your life so that you can defeat Satan and step all over his bald head looking self. You're supposed to put a whoop down on Satan. Satan not supposed to trample you underfoot. You're supposed to beat the brakes off of Satan. Huh? Your man of God come to help you. Don't fight your man of God. Then what Satan going to do? Beat the brakes off of you. Imagine that. If the man of God came to teach you how to defeat Satan. Huh? What's going to happen to you when you fight the man of God? You're going to be defeated by Satan. The man of God came to help you so that you would not be defeated. But you fighting the man of God. You're going to end up defeated by Satan because the man of God was there to help. You said there isn't no hell, but you're going to end up in hell if you don't repent. You don't give Jesus your life. You're going to end up in hell. Hell is a lake of fire for everybody that don't surrender their life to Jesus. After he done died and rose again to give you a deliverance from all sin, all of this judgment. You can receive Jesus and be saved or you can reject Jesus and hell will be your home. We can't say that there's not a hell because we see there's lava coming up. From the earth. Okay, where the fire coming from? Where the fire coming from? It's quite obvious. There's a hell. You can bow today or bow later on, but you're going to bow. Just don't wait till it's too late. You can deny Jesus all you want, but you came on this line where Jesus is being preached. So obviously, if you didn't believe Jesus, you wouldn't have had come on this line. You want to have come on this line. You don't believe Jesus. If you don't believe that Jesus existed, why would you sit at the feet of somebody that's preaching him? You're not making sense. You're not making sense. Obviously, the spirit of God give people a chance to receive Jesus so that you can hear the gospel. Man, you like listening to my jokes, man. Listen. But I get these jokes from Jesus, man. Jesus is the coolest flies you ever going to meet. You missing out, bro ham. Because all this stuff here is to draw you to Jesus that love you. Now... Let's go here. Let's go here. Praise God. Rabba kor ramandi kor reve. Look at uh, Proverbs chapter twenty-four, verse twenty-one. My son, fear the fear the Lord and the King. Fear the Lord and the King. Fear the Lord and the King. And meddle not with them that are given to change. Or this just letting you know to stay by your man of God. Stay in the plan of God for your life, your man of God. And also not to mix with people that you see are double-minded. Huh? Understand this. Don't mix with people that are against your king. That's why it has... Your king in this same text, it says, fear the Lord and the king. If you fear the king, you won't mix with people that are against the king. 
It says, meddle not with them that are given to change. This is so powerful because it's like a parable text. Why did it say those that are given to change? It means that they are double-minded. They don't have loyalty. They are unstable in all their ways. They are some timey. One minute they with the king, the next minute they not with the king. They shaky. Don't meddle with people like that. Meaning don't have them uh, in your ear. Don't conversate with them. Don't seek to get an understanding of them. Don't release conversation with them. They are not uh, they are not a safe equation to what God has given to you. Or he has anointed you with. Keep them out your mind. Keep them out your space. It says, "Don't meddle with them that are given to change." That means don't 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 be around two faced folks. Don't be around people that's just a part of the hype. You understand? People people that are just here today and gone tomorrow. They have an agenda. It says, "Fear the Lord and the King." So, so you have an obligation to fear your man of God. It's in the Bible. To fear your man of God. You see this, saints? If you don't fear your man of God, you don't fear God. God will send a man to you so that you can fear him. He'll send your king to you so that you could fear him. Through you fearing them, you're fearing him. It's in the Bible. Look at uh, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 21. My son, fear the Lord and the king. Fear the Lord and the king. Fear the Lord and the king. Meddle not with them that are given to change. Watch what it say, verse 22. Now, this is talking about double-minded people. For their calamity shall rise suddenly. Look what it says about double-minded people. Their calamity shall arise suddenly. And who knows the ruin of them both? Wow. Are you catching this? Wow. Wow. It says... Their calamity shall rise suddenly. Saints, this is the danger for disconnecting from the Lord, disconnecting from your king. This is in the Bible. If you don't believe it, read it yourself. But it's in the book of Proverbs because this is for wise people. Look what it says. For their calamity shall rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin of them both? Wow. Wow. Watch verse 24. He that says unto the wicked, you are righteous. Him shall the people curse. The nation shall ab abhor him. Look what it says. He that saith to the wicked that thou art righteous. Meaning... Don't give praise to people that you know are double-minded. You know that they have left God, left their king. It says, don't say that they're righteous. This is in the Bible. When you see people turn against God, turn against their man of God, don't say that they're righteous. Because they're wicked. It says, he that saith unto the wicked that thou art righteous, him shall the people curse. Why are the people cursing him? Because he's a satanic messenger. He's in agreement with Satan's perspective. They're not righteous, they're wicked. But see, the Lord and the king will always reveal who the wicked and the righteous are. Do you understand this? They are not blessed. They are not righteous. They are not in right standing with saints. Are you catching this? This is a scary text. It's telling you that if somebody does not fear the Lord and their king, they are not righteous before God. God does not deem them as righteous. 
They can appear righteous. You can see them quoting scriptures. You can see them talking about God. You can see them talking about how they love the Lord. The Bible says that they are not in right standing with God. Proverbs 21. 24 verse 21. Look what they say. Fear thou the Lord and the king. Look what it says in verse 24. He that saith unto the wicked that thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, the nation shall ab abhor him. Wow. Watch this, verse 25. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight. But to him that rebukes him shall be delight. And a good blessing shall come upon him. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Did you catch this, saints? It says, but to him that rebukes the disloyal. To him that rebukes the wicked. Meaning you say, nah, stop it. I ain't with that. I know, I know what you're about. <laughs> it's quite obvious what you're about. Don't, nah, don't. We not sisters. <laughs> we not brothers. Don't play that. <laughs> I know what you're about. You know, my brother, my sister is those that do the will of the father. I ain't with that mess. You, you trying to talk this sweet talk to me. You're not all that sweet. Look what you did to your, your Lord. Look what you did to your king. <laughs> You're not all that sweet. There's another side to you that we don't know about. You can act, act like we still cool and all that stuff, but we're not really all that cool because this is my man of God. This is who God sent to me. I ain't with you and how you operate. Something wrong with your bald head itself. You bald head. I ain't playing with you. You ain't got no edges. You a part of the Bite Your Scout Ministries. Satan done bit your scalp. He ain't going to bite mine. while why he biting yours. He bite your scalp. He done bit your scalp down. Bit it down. Bite it down. Bit it, bit it, bit it down. Scalp bit like a mug. From Bite Your Scalp Ministries. Satan done bit your scalp. He ain't about to bite my scalp like he bit yours. Nah, you, nah, he not gonna bite my scalp like he bit yours. You let him bite your scalp, that's your decision. He not about to bite mine. I'm gonna have my scalp in place. Karama corre. Karamanto corre ma. Zer romon de caramandio. See, see, saints, you got to be uh, protective of your favor with the Lord and your king. You got to be protective of that favor. You got to be protective of that favor. You got to protect that favor. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Be protective of the favor that you receive from God. When you get favor with a king, you get favor with a man of God, you got to guard that. And discern people that don't have that favor anymore, that are jealous at the fact that you've been given that favor. I don't want to speak to Lucifer after Lucifer is cast down. Because if I'm speaking to somebody that been demoted, I'm prophesying my future. Write that down. If you're in conversation with someone that is demoted, you are prophesying your future. Write that down. That's a wisdom door. Wrong conversation destroys divine favor. Wrong company destroys divine promotion. 
if your conversation is with someone that has been demoted, you are prophesying your future. So many times people talk to people that has been demoted. That's your future. Demotion. Who you're conversating with, if they have experienced the judgment of God, that's your future. The judgment of God. That's the, that's the part that you must be careful of that, saints. Oh, I can't stress that to you more. I can't stress that to you more. Saints, those of you all that have been following my teachings from earlier this year, I don't know if you remember, I still got the broadcasts up. I prophesied and said at the beginning of the year, I said, watch, there's going to be a falling away. I said, the Lord told me those that are with you today will not be with you later on. I said this. I prophesied this. Saints, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that Jesus is speaking to me because I not only give you prophecies, I tell you, I, I tell you stuff that's going to happen in the same year. I told you, I said, you see all these people? I said, there are people that God said to me, Jesus said to me, he said, they will not be here. They're here now. They're not going to be here. Every word I spoke came to pass. Every word I spoke. Every word I spoke. I was just looking at that London prophecy. Every word I spoke come to pass. It came to pass. Everything I prophesied this year, I prophesied. I told you. I, and I did it at the beginning of the year. I said, listen, I'm seeing this in a vision. I told you I saw a man with a sword in one of his hands and the Bible in his next hand. And I said, the Lord told me this is the spirit of witchcraft. He said, this spirit is going to enter every single person that don't truly love Jesus. They're not all the way in. They're not fully focused. They're not fully surrendered. They're not fully submissive. They're not fully died to themselves. They don't want to give all to Jesus. I said, this spirit is going to enter them. I said, the Lord told me that in this ministry, those that began in this ministry this year, they will not end in this ministry this year. I said it, I said it, I said it, I said it. I prophesied, I told you, I said, there's one more attack. I said, I experienced an attack, but I said, the Lord said that there's another one about to come. And some of y'all were sad on this line. That already happened. Remember I told you, I said, I'm not praying against it. I'm not asking God to take it away. It's supposed to take place. I have to be crucified because the glory that I'm walking in, it is required. The same Jesus process is required for every woman and every man that is moving in the same Jesus anointing. The Bible said these works I do, you shall do also in greater works. Jesus said that. So people are shocked that you say that you got Jesus ability. You shocked because I got something greater than his ability. got something greater than his ability because he said these works you do and greater greater I'm going to prophesy going into this new year as well I'm going to prophesy going into this new year because saints there's going to be some profound things taking place here's the crazy thing I'm real attentive about this year 2020 let me tell you something I'm going to live in 2019 but let me just say this. Even though I'm in 2019, I'm not really there. I'm really in 2020 because I know something. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, what you must understand is, is that there's going to be an explosion of the fire and the power of God, especially at JHM. You're going to see it take place. And I'm going to step into it even before January. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. And Maka Rapa Coste Pele And 2019, of course, we're going to have the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. And it's going to be amazing. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to be so strong what you're going to begin to see from the Lord. And I want to teach some of you all some things so that you can step into more dreams, more visions, more tangibility of Jesus, more of the release of his power. I want you to see it in your own life. I don't want you to go without this realm, I want it to increase. So I'm going to start as I already have been doing. 
I have a plethora of teachings, even on this page. I'm teaching you deep stuff here. Facebook Live, I'm teaching you deep stuff here. On Facebook, we reached over 1.2 1. 1. million people in less than a week. Over 1.2 million. Souls. The gospel. That's our agenda. Get these souls, get these souls back to their father. Because Maury ain't gonna do you right. He's gonna keep on reading that DNA. <laughs> Maury ain't gonna do you no never mind. He ain't gonna do you right. He's gonna keep on reading that DNA test over and over again. It's not the father. <laughs> He ain't gonna do you right. He gonna embarrass you. And not the, 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 we just did the DNA test. We find out that he is not the father. He's not the father either. Do you have another dad? No daddy. <laughs> Go daddy. No daddy at all. Sugardaddy.com. None of that. <laughs> Big daddy, any daddy, you got a big daddy, a small daddy, you know small daddy? Do you have a do you have a Latino daddy? African daddy. You they, listen, they, what daddy do you have? Do you have a big pun daddy? Big papa daddy. Daddy daycare, any of that. <laughs> the DNA test has come back. It shows that man, man is not the father. Some of them girls need to ask Maury if he'll do the DNA test because Maury be looking at them girls funny. <laughs> hey, Maury, Maury, can you do the DNA test? I'm not, I'm not going to let you disrespect me again. I told you that mine is not strong enough to reproduce. I just was there for a little while. I pulled out. I left. Don't try to include me. <laughs> Don't try to include me. Though. They said that it melts in 20 seconds. They said that it melts in about 20 seconds. Don't try to include me. I was not the purpose of this birth. It's not enough. Say, you ever saw more and more be looking at some of them girls funny like that? Don't, don't you tell anybody. Don't you tell anybody. I'm not doing no more DNA tests. God wants your financial life to change, but you got to sow your way out. You want your financial life to change. You can't be afraid to sow. And you got to get into the flow and the habit of sowing. Like sowing got to become your first nature. Like you got to be like that in everything that you receive. My mindset is as a sower. Look what it say right here. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 25. The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. Do you see this? The Bible say the righteous, the righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul. You understand this? The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul. You must know this when you are a sower. You're going to eat to the satisfying of your soul. Are you catching this? You are going to eat to the satisfying of your soul. What does this mean? Everything in the realm of knowledge, wisdom, money, relationship, joy, favor, you're going to have that in a, in a satisfactory realm. You are going to eat 
to the satisfying of your soul. Say, I received that. That means the Lord going to satisfy your soul. You're going to have what you desire to have, what you want to have. But watch. Righteous people are sowing people. Sowing people are righteous people. Sowing is righteousness. Let, let me show you this. Uh, the righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul. You saw that? That's what the Lord wants for you. You his daughter. You his son. You Listen. Jesus don't got planned for your life, tribulation and trial and tribulation and trial. He got planned pleasure, planned joy, planned peace. But listen, it's my job to fulfill kingdom laws so that I can untie this plan of God for my life without any interruption. It's my job to fulfill these kingdom laws so that I can receive this money, this pleasure, this prosperity, this joy, this abundance. Because Satan want to hold it up, my seed unlock it. See, Satan want to embarrass me, my seed bring me double. He said, I bring you double for your shame. Satan don't want you to have joy. He likes seeing you depressed and worried. That ain't your destiny. Praise God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Verse, uh, uh, chapter 9, verse 10. Look what it say. It said, when you sow seed, it increases the fruits of your righteousness. So that means that it increases your righteousness, the fruit, the, the, the fruit that Jesus looks at. He says, by your fruit, he shall know, you shall know them. It's telling you that your righteous fruit increases the more you sow seed. So every time I'm sowing a seed, I'm increasing the fruits of my righteousness and I'm in position for riches and wealth and money and supernatural prosperity to come to me. Every time I sow, I'm increasing my righteousness with God. My right, watch this. So sowing money increases my right standing with God. It does. It's in the Bible. It said it increases the fruits of your righteousness. So righteousness is right standing. It just told me that sowing increases my right standing with God. So now you understand why I say sowers hear God more. Sowers are more prophetic. Sowers are more apostolic. A sower can demonstrate the power and the spirit of God easier than a prayer warrior. A sower is in the glory realm. A sower moves with angels. Sowers carry the fire of God. Sowers carry financial anointing. Financial angels surround a sower. You can watch the replay to get these wisdom doors. Sowing transfers the authority of Jesus to me over wealth. Sowing transfers The authority of Jesus to me for wealth. Every time I sow, I have access to whatever I desire, whatever I want, whatever brings me pleasure. Let me tell you something. Sowing will bring you sexual pleasure. God will link you to your man of God. And give you sexual pleasure. You 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 uh you a woman, uh you a man. God will give you a woman. Sowing unlocks what you've been searching for. That you what you've been petitioning God for. 
Sowing carries the whole package of God. Sowing will give you privileges. Sowing will give you access to do things that people can't do. Pray like people can't pray. Walk like people can't walk. Talk like people can't talk. Do what people can't do. Live like people can't live. Sowing activates the minister of finances. The minister of finances is assigned to take your seed and to bring it into every arena of your prayer that you've been praying about. Every desire of your heart, bring it into manifestation. Sowing promotes you to carry the money bags of Jesus. The money bags of Jesus, Judas had the money bags, but his heart wasn't right. But see, your heart is right. Sowing keeps your heart right so that you can handle wealth with purity. And you can handle wealth with submission. So you can handle wealth with wisdom. Sowing increases my wisdom with God, wisdom from God. Every time you sow financial honor, your wisdom from God is increasing. Now watch this. If you sow and you stop sowing, the revelation of sowing has to be rebirthed in you. Do you know there's people that sow and stop sowing so the sowing message becomes foolishness to them? The Bible said the gospel is foolishness to those that are perishing. And watch. There are people that perish financially. Why? Because the gospel about sowing has become foolishness to them. So now they're perishing in finances. Your apostle come to reactivate you in the financial anointing. Your apostle come to, to re-anoint you to sow. To retrain you. Do you know? Watch this. You can be going to the gym. You can stop going to the gym. That's how it is with sewing. You can sew and stop sewing. Now, you still know that you need to go to the gym. Because you started it, but you didn't finish. The same way you can know that you need to sew and stop sewing. What happens? According to you, your body can get out of shape. Well, what happens? When you stop sewing, your finances get out of shape. Now, see what happens when you try to get back into the flow of training. Most times you'll need a trainer and you don't have to need a trainer, but there is a trainer there that could help stabilize you so that your mind will be steadfast on training. The same way God will send a seed trainer, a sowing trainer to train you into sowing so that you'll keep on sowing. You'll keep on receiving.